very important meeting during your constituency period. I know all of us are very busy, but um, let's continue doing the job that we are deployed to do in this parliament. Um, I, will, I will ask Marcel to flight the agenda for us. It is going, it's going to be a very short briefing and um, then we just need to adopt the report. Otherwise, um, Marcel, can you flag for us the agenda? Recording in progress. Morning, Chairperson. Morning, honorable members, uh, officials from the department and colleagues. Yes, Chairperson, our flight. Are you able to see it, Chairperson? Not yet, Marcel. While Marcel, while Marcel is busy sorting out the IT to flag the, the agenda, let me um, first of all then welcome the Department of Women, Youth and Persons with Disabilities into this meeting. Um, we did receive an uh, apology from the minister of, of women, youth, and persons with disabilities um, because he is busy this morning in cabinet. Um, but I want to ask us to have a minute of silence after the passing of the Deputy Minister of Women, Youth, and Persons with Disabilities. And we then also convey our sincere condolences to the family of Dr. Mkise. Um, it was a great shock to all of us, but um, we really need to keep this family and um, also the department and the colleagues in our place. Let's give a moment of silence. Thank you. I thank you, members. May the soul of Dr. Nkisi rest in eternal peace and rise in glory. Um, I don't, while Marcel is, is um, struggling with the IT, I will, I will um, give the agenda, I will read the agenda to members, but it was also sent to all members on the platform. Um, the Select Committee on the Health and Social Services um, has conveyed this meeting to be held as followed Tuesday, 25 September 2021, and the venue is a virtual platform. The agenda is as follows. Briefing by the Department of Women, Youth and Persons with Disabilities on the agreement amending the South African Development Community, SADC, Protocol on Gender and Development. And then it will be the adoption of the report on the agreement amending the SADC Protocol on Gender and Development. Um, that is the agenda. And let me again thank the members for coming to this meeting as South Africa needs to, to give um, the report um, and adopt 
the report of on SEDEC on the agreement amending the SEDEC protocol on gender development. And then um, without any further ado, I will hand over to, that is the DG in the meeting because the minister is not here. DG. Good morning, Chairperson. Um, my name is Shoki Shabalala. I'm the Deputy Director General in the Department of Women, Youth and Persons with Disabilities. The DG and the Minister are held up in Cabinet. I noted a letter from the Ministry to yourself indicating their commitment to Cabinet this morning as they are tabling the bill that seeks to inform the establishment of the National Council on Gender-Based Violence and Femicide. With me is a team of my fellow colleagues who have joined me this morning. I don't know whether, Chair, you would like them to individually introduce themselves or should I just cite who they are in our midst? Uh, Chairperson will guide me. Um, no, DDG, you can continue. My apologies, okay. I did receive the the letter from the minister indicating that the DG will also be with her in cabinet. So okay. you can continue. Thank you. Um, just a, at a very high level, I'm accompanied by our legal colleague, Nondumiso Mulunga, Ms. Ranji Reddy, the acting DDG in the unit for policy issues, and Tate Tolani Kumalo, one of our colleagues as well in the IR unit, and Ms. Marumu Mailuna. The presentation will actually be led by Madam Ranji Reddy and will be supported by Madam Nondumiso and Kolani as and when a need arise. I will hand over to my colleague to hand over, I mean, to take us through the presentation, Ms. Ranji. Thank you, uh, DDG. Uh, good morning, Honorable Chair, Honorable Members and uh, participants on the uh, platform. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Um, are you able to see this DDG? Yes, we can. Okay, I, I have put it on slideshow. I, I hope there's no issues with it. Um, so thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair and to the committee for giving us this opportunity to present on the amendments to the SADC protocol on gender and development. Um, the contents of the presentation is, uh, we'll give you a short background. Uh, we'll speak to the certification of the agreement. Uh, we'll share with the, uh, the committee uh, those amendments that uh, the proposed amendments to the protocol, and then a, a quick summary. So according to uh, the constitution section 2312 of uh, 1996, and any international agreement binds the Republic only after it has been approved by resolution uh, of Parliament. That means both the National Assembly and the National Council of Provinces. So even though South Africa has already signed the SADC Protocol on Gender and Development on the 17th of August, 2008, uh, it was ratified by, by Parliament on 29 October 2012, and it entered into force for the country on 22nd February 2013. Um, however, um, any amendments to this protocol will need to go back through Parliament, through both houses, uh, before it can be, it can, uh, it can be signed uh, as a country. Now, South Africa has an obligation to comply with its international commitments. And um, the amendments that were taking place uh, were around uh, 2017, 2018. And in uh, July, 2018, uh, this, the SADC Ministers for Gender and Women's Affairs uh, held a meeting in, in Khabarov and they, uh, they looked at who uh, signed uh, the amendments already, and, and how could that, that be expedited? So it was in that meeting that it was indicated that only 10 
of the 15 member states at that stage had signed the agreement amending the protocol. And the countries are listed, Angola, Botswana, DRC, Lesotho, Madagascar, Mozambique, Swaziland, Tanzania, and Zimbabwe. South Africa had not uh, at that stage uh, signed the agreement uh, or the amendments because we were going to undertake the processes through parliament. So at that minister's meeting, um, um, it was decided that the other countries would be urged to, to, to do the same. And then following that, in, in Johannesburg, uh, the SADC ministers held a meeting again, and that was in July 2018. And uh, our minister at that stage in the Department of Women uh, uh, informed the summit of the intention of South Africa to sign the agreement. So subsequently, the agreement was then uh, uh, sent to the state law advisors, both in the Department of Justice and constitutional development and the Department of International Relations and Cooperation for Certification. Now, on 7th August 2018, we received the certification from the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development, uh, in particular, the Office of the Chief State Law Advisor, um, advising us that the agreement is in order and compatible with the domestic laws of the Republic. And uh, the Department of Women then submitted the agreement to the Department of uh, uh, International Relations and Cooperation so that it can be certified that uh, the protocol is consistent uh, with uh, international law and with South Africa's international obligations. I just want to emphasize that there was one issue on the domestic laws of the Republic that, that gave us concern. And we'll come up on that issue a little later, but because of the changes that were and are happening in the country around that issue, uh, it, it, it didn't seem like it was in any way an impediment. Then in 2018, in September, uh, we received our legal opinion from the Department of International Relations and Cooperation. And that uh, in particular was from the office of the chief state law advisor, indicating that the agreement will impact domestic legislation. Uh, therefore, we needed to take uh, uh, the, 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 um, the amendments under the, the ambit of section 2312 of the constitution. And therefore, uh, we needed to bring it through parliament for approval before the president could sign the amendments to the protocol. Now, in um, in August 2019, uh, the department was given the opportunity by the Portfolio Committee on Women, Youth, and Persons with Disabilities uh, um, uh, to, to present the amendments, which uh, was done, and the committee deliberated on it. And then the committee had indicated that it would take the matter under consideration and then forward uh, its uh, its. Um, uh, a recommendation to the National Assembly. However, because of uh, a number of issues and one of which was the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, things were delayed. Um, so, so Chair, uh, I'm, I'm going to share with you the areas of the proposed amendments. Uh, the following amendments are made to the SADC protocol on gender and development. Uh, there was a change to Article 14 where uh, they were inserting immediately after paragraph one, a paragraph that speaks to uh, strengthening and, and developing specific laws, policies, and programs towards gender equality and, and, and gender equity. Um, Article five uh, is amended by deleting the words affirmative action. Uh, many member states had issues with these words and it was eventually agreed that it will be replaced with special measures. And that's a language in line with the CEDAW uh, convention. Uh, Article eight, subparagraph sub A of paragraph two is amended to read as follows. No person under the age of 18 shall marry. Now, previously it had a little uh, issue to say under, under uh, unless under, uh, you know, exceptional circumstances. And now that was completely removed and it is totally prohibited that marriage shall occur below the age of 18. 
uh, Article 10 was amended to, to uh, concentrate uh, uh, and, and strengthen the issue of widows and widowers' rights. And uh, what's listed here was uh, how, how it could be uh, strengthened. Uh, A, uh, that widows and widowers are not subjected to inhuman, humiliating, or degrading treatment. B, automatically become guardians and custodians of their children when their husband or wife dies, and unless otherwise determined by a competent court of law. C, they have the right to an equitable share in the inheritance of property of their spouses. D, they have the right to remarry any person of their choice. And E, they have the protection against all forms of violence and discrimination based on their status. Article 11 focused on not just the girl child, but in the inclusion of and the boy child. So uh, the state parties uh, must adopt laws or policies or programs to ensure the development and protection of both the boy and the girl child by eliminating all forms of discrimination against them in the family, community, institutions, and at state level, uh, by ensuring that they have equal access to education and healthcare and are not subjected to any treatment which causes them to develop a negative self-image. Uh, C, uh, ensuring that they enjoy the same rights and are protected from harmful cultural attitudes and practices in accordance with uh, uh, the UNCRC and the African Charter on the Rights and Welfare of the Child, uh, protecting them from economic exploitation, uh, of, from forms of trafficking, and all forms of violence, including sexual abuse, and to ensure that they have equal access to information, education, services, and facilities on sexual and reproductive health and rights. Um, uh, continuing on Article 11, state parties shall develop concrete measures to prevent and eliminate violence, harmful practices, child marriage, forced marriage, teenage pregnancy, genital mutilation, child labor, as well as mitigate their impact on both girls and boys, health, well-being, education, future opportunities, and earnings. Uh, the amendment to Article 12 uh, is as follows. State parties shall endeavor to ensure equal and effective representation of women in decision-making positions in the political, public, and private sectors, including through the use of special measures as provided for in Article 5. Then Article 14 was amended. Um, state parties shall enact laws that promote equal access to retention and, and, and completion uh, of early childhood education, primary, secondary, tertiary, vocational, and non-formal education, including adult literacy, in, in accordance with uh, the Protocol on Education and Training and the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, state parties shall take special measures to increase the number of girls taking up STEM subjects, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, and in ICT, information, communication, technology, starting from the primary, secondary, and then moving up into tertiary and higher levels. And then thirdly, state parties shall adopt and implement gender-sensitive educational curricula, policies and programs addressing gender stereotypes in education, as well as addressing gender-based violence amongst other key issues in the education sector. Then Article 16 was amended on the multiple roles of women. Uh, state parties shall conduct time-use studies and adopt policy measures to promote shared responsibility between men and women within the household and the family so that you can ease the burden of multiple roles played by women. And the second proposed amendment is to recognize and value the unpaid care and domestic work through the provision of public services, uh, infrastructure, and social protection policies. Article 7 was amended to read, 
economic empowerment. State parties shall undertake reforms to give men and women equal rights and equal opportunities to economic resources and improved access to control and ownership over productive resources, to over land and other forms of property, financial services, inheritance, and natural resources. And then Article 17 continues that state parties shall review the national trade and entrepreneurship policies so that they are made gender responsive. And state parties shall, in accordance with the provisions of special measures in Article 5, develop strategies to ensure that women benefit equally from economic empowerment opportunities, including those created through public procurement. Article 19 was amended uh, with the following. State parties shall review, amend, and enact laws and develop policies that ensure women and men have equal access to wage employment, to achieve full and productive employment, decent work, including social protection and equal pay for work of equal value for all women and men in all sectors in line with the SADC protocol on employment and labor. And then Article 20 was amended to read, state parties shall enact and enforce legislation prohibi prohibiting all forms of gender-based violence. And to continue, to develop, state parties shall develop strategies to prevent and eliminate all harmful social and cultural practices, such as child marriage, forced marriage, teenage marriage, teenage pregnancies, slavery, and female genital mutilation. Ensure that perpetrators of gender-based violence, including domestic violence, rape, femicide, sexual harassment, female genital mutilation, and all other forms of gender-based violence are tried by a court of competent jurisdiction. State parties shall enact and adopt specific legislative provisions to prevent trafficking in persons, and provide holistic services to victims with the aim of reintegration into society. Um, state parties shall put in place mechanisms by which all relevant law enforcement authorities and institutions should eradicate national, regional, and international trafficking in person syndicates. State parties shall put in place harmonized data collection mechanisms to improve research and reporting on the types and modes of trafficking to ease uh, to ensure effective program and monitoring. Uh, state parties shall establish bilateral and multilateral agreements to run joint actions against trafficking in persons among origin, transit, and destination countries. And state parties shall ensure capacity building, awareness raising, and sensitization campaigns on trafficking in persons uh, for law enforcement officials. Article 25 was amended uh, to read as follows. Uh, the title was Integrated Approaches. State parties shall adopt integrated approaches, including institutional cross-sector structures with the aim of eliminating gender-based violence. Part seven of the protocol was amended to read as follows sexual and reproductive health and reproductive rights. Uh, and that language now is the accepted language at the global level. Um, many countries uh, do not just talk about sexual rights. Uh, they would rather talk about reproductive rights. So, so that was the amendment there. State parties shall in line with the SADC protocol on health and other regional and international commitments by member states on issues relating to health, adopt and implement legislative frameworks, policies, programs, and services to enhance gender-sensitive, appropriate, and affordable healthcare in particular, to eliminate maternal mortality, to develop and implement policies and programs to address the mental, sexual, and reproductive health needs of women and men, in accordance with the program of action of the ICPD and the Beijing Platform 
for action. C, to ensure the provision of hygiene and sanitary facilities and nutritional needs of women, including those women that are in prisons. Article 27 on HIV and AIDS, state parties shall take every step necessary to adopt and implement gender sensitive policies and programs and to enact legislation that will address the prevention, treatment, care and support in accordance with, but not limited to uh, a number of these international instruments, uh, the Maseru Declaration on HIV and AIDS, uh, the SADC sponsored UN Commission on the Status of Women and the Girl, Child and HIV and AIDS Resolution and the Political Declaration on HIV and AIDS. State parties shall ensure that the policies and programs referred to in sub-article one take account of the unequal status of women, the particular vulnerability of the girl child, as well as harmful practices and the biological factors that result in women constituting the majority of those infected and affected by HIV and AIDS. State parties shall develop gender sensitive strategies to prevent new infections, ensure universal access to HIV and AIDS treatments for infected women, men, girls, and boys, and develop and implement policies and programs to ensure appropriate recognition of work carried out by caregivers, the majority of whom are women, the allocation of resources and the psychological support for caregivers, as well as to promote the involvement of men in the care and support of people living with HIV and AIDS. And then Article 28 um, was amended uh, to read as gender in media, information, and communication. And paragraph one of the article states, state parties shall enact legislation and develop national policies and strategies, including professional guidelines and codes of conduct to prevent and address gender discrimination in the media. And paragraph four of the article, state parties shall take measures to promote the equal representation of men and women in the ownership of and decision-making structures in the media. And so we had, uh, there's an insertion of a part 10 into the protocol. Uh, it's on gender and the environment. State parties shall in accordance with multilateral continental and regional agreements on the environment on sustainable development and climate change adopt measures to address the impact of climate change and environmental degradation on gender, to promote active participation by men, women, boys, and girls in the protection of the environment, to mitigate climate change, and to promote sustainable exploitation and the use of nat nat natural resources, uh, to develop policy strategies and programs to address the gender issues with respect to the environment, climate change, and sustainable development, to conduct research, to assess the differential gendered impact of climate change, and to put in place effective ad adaptive measures. So amendment of part 10, the numbering of part 10 of the protocol and its subsequent articles are amended by changing their numbering in a sequential map manner continuing from Article 31 of the new Part 10. And then amendment to Article 33 uh, of the protocol is as follows. State parties shall ensure gender sensitive and responsive budgets and planning, including designating the necessary resources towards initiatives aimed at empowering women and girls. Uh, amendment of Article 35, state parties shall ensure the implementation of this protocol at the national level in line with the SADC implementation action plans and the SADC monitoring, evaluation, and reporting framework. Um, entry into force, um, once the agreements have been signed by uh, member states, it shall enter into force on the date of its adoption by a decision of three quarters of the member states that are parties to the protocol. And then in terms of the de uh, de 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 deposition of the amendments, 
the original text of the agreement shall be deposited with the executive secretary of SADC. We shall trans transmit certified copies to all member states and the executive secretary of SADC shall register this agreement with the secretariat of the UN, the commission of the AU and such other organizations as the SADC council may determine. So in, in, uh, in conclusion, Chair, the summary of the process is that the guidelines on concluding international agreements are provided for in the 2006 Manual on Executive Acts of the President of South Africa. And the process of concluding these international agreements entails, one, certification on the consistency with the domestic law from both the Office of the Chief State Law Advisor at the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development, obtaining a legal opinion on the compliance and consistency with international law, as well as South Africa's international obligations uh, from, the, um, from DERCO. Um, then we need approval by parliament in terms of section 2312 of the constitution, which is what uh, this process is about. And then the relevant department uh, in this case, uh, the Department of Women prepares a president minute for signing by the minister and the president. And then the signed presidential minute, a short explanatory memorandum, both the legal opinions, the copy of the agreement must be forwarded to the Department of International Relations uh, for, for certification in a prescribed format so that they can deposit it uh, um, um, after the president has approved and signed. Um, so the recommendation uh, chair to the committee, to the select committee is that, uh, and this is uh, one of the issues that we are faced with as a challenge at the moment. To date, it is only South Africa and one other member state. I think it's Malawi who still has not signed the agreement to amend the protocol. Other member states have done so. The SADC Secretariat has therefore indicated uh, to, to uh, Malawi and South Africa that it needs to urgently publish the document with all the president's signatures by the end of October. And it will do so now with or without the last two member states signature and that I think has serious implications for the president and the country at large chair. So we are trying to expedite uh, the process through parliament in order to, uh, to be able to deliver on this. We are therefore approaching the National Assembly and the National Council of Province, Provinces sorry, to assist by expediting the approval for the country to sign, given that the matter has been in abeyance since August 2019. Chair, um, I, will, I will end there and we'll uh, take any questions that needs uh, to be cleared. Thank you. Let me take the opportunity to thank the department. Um, I will now ask members to raise their hands for any clarity seeking questions. You can remove your, your presentation. There we go. Is there any clarity seeking questions, members? Member Chabale, you can. Uh, thanks, Chairperson. Uh, thanks, Chairperson. Let me welcome the presentation of the protocols. Um, and this is very good that South Africa, the way we do our protocols have got to be signed by parliament before we can attach the signature, where the rules of engagement are laid bare and where we can check if these interventions are not in contravention of our constitution. And I know very well that before anything can be brought to us, that uh, all those checks uh, uh, and balances uh, are made. Um, 
it's good to sign uh, protocols and conventions. But if you don't have laws, then you end up uh, being in error, being asked to come and explain why are you still doing what you said you are not going to do. So people sign first, and from there they try to fix the laws when it's supposed to be the other way around. Um, and for me, from the look of things, uh, when I read when I read this uh, day before yesterday, and after listening to this presentation, I, I don't see any glitches uh, with the forward direction of the South African uh, government uh, on matters related to gender and development. And I saw, and I therefore chairperson. Uh, suggest that we adopt this uh, report on this protocol. Um, thank you very thank, thank you very much, Member Chabaleng. Is there um, any other member who wants to make an input or seek clarity? Um, member Christians? Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, I just want to make the comment, Chairperson, that a few very important amendments are being made, and um, it will be interesting going forward to see the implementation in our country of these very important uh, amendments and, um, you know, uh, trafficking women, um, children, all the aspects in our country, all the people in our country that have been left behind historically. And, um, you know, it will be interesting to see the changes that this, these amendments will make in our country. Um, so going forward, it, um, I think as a depart, as a committee, as a select committee, it will also be important for us to monitor what happens with these amend amendments. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Member Christians. If there's no other hand, I want to um, hold the report of the Select Committee on Health and Social Services to this meeting mm -hmm. for adoption. The report of the Select Committee on Health and Social Services on the agreement amending the South African Development Con Community SEDEC Protocol on Gender and Development, dated 21st September, 2021. The Select Committee on Health and Social Services, having considered the agreement amending the SEDEC Protocol on Gender and Development in terms of Section 2312 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa, reports as follows. The committee recommends that the council, in terms of section 2312 of the constitution, approve the said protocol. This report is to be considered by the committee. Um, can I, I believe, um, Member Chabaleng, your hand is still raised, is that to move for the adoption of the report? Yes, Chairperson, I've alluded to that in my earlier input uh, that we adopt the report. Thanks. Thank you, Member Chabaleng. Can I have a second for the adoption of the report? Uh, Baha seconds, Chairperson. Uh, thank you, Member Baha. Um, so this report is, is now duly adopted and I believe it will be ATC. Um, can I therefore thank the department for, um, for the presentation and for the hard work that they did in bringing this um, amendments to the select committee. I believe also like all the other members that it will have a tremendous impact in our fight against gender-based violence and femicide in South Africa. And um, 
I also need to thank all our members because all of us take the issue of gender-based violence and femicide very seriously um, in this committee. And I want to thank you because we had a full house this morning. All members uh, were present in this meeting and um, I really need to thank you for taking this issue up so seriously that you were prepared to, to come to this meeting even during constituency period, because it is one of the most important things that we as this committee, like member Christian said, it's part of our oversight work and it's also part of our work to make sure that the laws are amended. But to the department, thank you very much. To our staff members, thank you also for your hard work. This meeting is adjourned. I thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Chairperson. Thank you, and stay safe, please. Bye. Recording stopped.